I think these are carpenter ants. They appeared in my house in late May 2016. It's plausible that they were nesting in a part of the house that has damp wood. Here you can see them crawling around the bathroom sink where they came in through an uncovered hole in the wall for an electrical outlet. Hopefully in the future this outlet will be covered and the damp wood in the house will be corrected. It's important to prevent carpenter ants not just to avoid structural damage to your house, but also to reduce the number of insects that are born into short lives with potentially painful deaths. That said, fewer carpenter ants may just mean more food for other bugs instead, so it's not clear how much good you do by preventing carpenter ants from an insect welfare perspective. Following is some information on carpenter ants quoted from the Wikipedia article. Quote, Carpenter ants, Campanotus species, are large ants indigenous to many forested parts of the world. They build nests inside wood consisting of galleries chewed out with their mandibles, preferably in dead, damp wood. They do not consume the wood, however, unlike termites. Sometimes carpenter ants hollow out sections of trees. They also commonly infest wooden buildings and structures and are a widespread nuisance and major cause of structural damage. Carpenter ant species reside both outdoors and indoors in moist, decaying, or hollow wood, most commonly in forest environments. They cut galleries into the wood grain to provide passageways for movement from section to section of the nest. Certain parts of a house, such as around and under windows, roof eaves, decks, and porches, are more likely to be infested by carpenter ants because these areas are most vulnerable to moisture. Carpenter ants have been known to construct extensive underground tunneling systems. These systems often lead to and end at some food source, often aphid colonies, where the ants extract and feed on honeydew. These tunneling systems also often exist in trees. The colonies typically include a central parent colony surrounded and supplemented by smaller satellite colonies. Carpenter ants are foragers that typically eat parts of other dead insects or substances derived from other insects. Common foods for them include insect parts, honeydew produced by aphids, or some secretions from plants. Carpenter ants can increase the survivability of aphids when they attend to them. They attend to any aphid species, but can also express preference for specific ones. Most species of carpenter ants forage at night. When foraging, they usually collect and consume dead insects. Some species less commonly collect live insects. When they discover a dead insect, workers surround it and extract its bodily fluids to be carried back to the nest. The remaining chitin-based shell is left behind. Occasionally, the ants bring the chitinous head of the insect back to the nest, where they also extract its inner tissue. The ants can forage individually or in small or large groups, though they often opt to do so individually. Different colonies in close proximity may have overlapping foraging regions, though they typically do not assist each other in foraging. Their main food sources normally include proteins and carbohydrates. When workers find food sources, they communicate this information to the rest of the nest. They use biochemical pheromones to mark the shortest path that can be taken from the nest to the source. When a sizable number of workers follows this trail, the strength of the queue increases and a foraging trail is established. This ends when the food source is depleted. Foraging trails can either be under or above ground. All ants in this genus, and some related genera, possess an obligate bacterial endosymbiont called blockmania. This bacterium has a small genome and retains genes to biosynthesize essential amino acids and other nutrients. This suggests the bacterium plays a role in ant nutrition. Many Campanota species are also infected with Wolbachia, another endosymbiont that is widespread across insect groups. 
Carpenter ants work to build the nests that house eggs in environments with high humidity due to their sensitivity to environmental humidity. These nests are called primary nests. Satellite nests are constructed once the primary nest is established and has begun to mature. Residents of satellite nests include older larvae, pupae, and some winged individuals. Only eggs, the newly hatched larvae, workers, and the queen reside in the primary nests. As satellite nests do not have environmentally sensitive eggs, the ants can construct them in rather diverse locations that can actually be relatively dry. When conditions are warm and humid, winged males and females participate in a nuptial flight. They emerge from their satellite nests and females mate with a number of males while in flight. The males die after mating. These newly fertilized queens discard their wings and search for new areas to establish primary nests. The queens build new nests and deposit around 20 eggs, nurturing them as they grow until worker ants emerge. The worker ants eventually assist her in caring for the brood as she lays more eggs. Again, satellite nests will be established and the process will repeat itself. Relatedness is the probability that a gene in one individual is an identical copy by descent of a gene in another individual. It is essentially a measure of how closely related two individuals are with respect to a gene. It is quantified by the coefficient of relatedness, which is a number between 0 and 1. The larger the value, the more two individuals are related. Carpenter ants are social hymenopteran insects. This means the relatedness between offspring and parents is disproportionate. Females are more closely related to their sisters than they are to their offspring. Between full sisters, the coefficient of relatedness is r greater than 0.75 due to their haplodiploid genetic system. Between parent and offspring, the coefficient of relatedness is r equals 0.5 because given the event in meiosis, a certain gene has a 50% chance of being passed on to the offspring. The level of relatedness is an important dictator of individual interactions. According to Hamilton's rule for relatedness, for relative specific interactions to occur, such as kin altruism, a high level of relatedness is necessary between two individuals. Carpenter ants, like many social insect species, have mechanisms by which individuals determine whether others are nestmates or not. They are useful because they explain the presence or absence of altruistic behavior between individuals. They also act as evolutionary strategies to help prevent incest and promote kin selection. Social carpenter ants recognize their kin in many ways. These methods of recognition are largely chemical in nature and include environmental odors, pheromones, transferable labels, and labels from the queen that are distributed to and among nest members. Because they have a chemical basis for emission and recognition, odors are useful because many ants can detect such changes in their environment through their antennae. This allows acceptance of nestmates and rejection of non-nestmates. The actual process of recognition for carpenter ants requires two events. First, a cue must be present on a donor animal. These cues are called labels. Next, the receiving animal must be able to recognize and process the cue. In order for an individual carpenter ant to be recognized as a nestmate, it must, as an adult, go through specific interactions with older members of the nest. This process is also necessary in order for the ant to recognize and distinguish other individuals. If these interactions do not occur in the beginning of adult life, the ant will be unable to be distinguished as a nestmate and unable to distinguish nestmates. Recognition allows for the presence of kin-specific interactions, like kin altruism. Altruistic individuals increase other individuals' fitness at the expense of their own fitness. Carpenter ants perform altruistic actions toward their nestmates so that their shared genes are propagated more readily or more often. In many social insect species like these ants, 
many worker animals are sterile and do not have the ability to reproduce. As a result, they forego reproduction to donate energy and help the fertile individuals reproduce. As in most other social insect species, individual interaction is heavily influenced by the queen. The queen can influence individuals with odors called pheromones, which can have different effects. Some pheromones have been known to calm workers, while others have been known to excite them. Pheromonal cues from ovipositing queens have a stronger effect on worker ants than those of virgin queens. In many social insect species, social behavior can increase the disease resistance of animals. This phenomenon, called social immunization, exists in carpenter ants. It is mediated through the feeding of other individuals by regurgitation. The regurgitate can have antimicrobial activity, which would be spread amongst members of the colony. Some proteases with antimicrobial activity have been found to exist in regurgitated material. Communal sharing of immune response capability is likely to play a large role in colonial maintenance during highly pathogenic periods. Polygyny is often associated with many social insect species and is usually characterized by limited mating flights, small queen size, and other characteristics. However, carpenter ants have extensive mating flights and relatively large queens, distinguishing them from polygynous species. Carpenter ants are described as oligogenous because they have a number of fertile queens which are intolerant of each other and must therefore spread to different areas of the nest. Some aggressive interactions have been known to take place between queens, but not necessarily through workers. Queens become aggressive mainly to other queens if they trespass on a marked territory. Queens in a given colony can work together in brood care, and the workers tend to experience higher rates of survival in colonies with multiple queens. Some researchers still subscribe to the notion that carpenter ant colonies are only monogenous. Carpenter ants can damage wood used in the construction of buildings. They can leave behind a sawdust-like material called frass that provides clues to their nesting location. Carpenter ant galleries are smooth and very different from termite-damaged areas which have mud packed into the hollowed-out areas." End quote. This page reports, quote, Worker ants share their food with other colony members. Removing food sources will help reduce, but may not eliminate, a carpenter ant infestation. The queen and a few workers will resort to cannibalism, if necessary, for their survival. End quote. This page explains that, quote, under normal conditions, the egg-to-adult sequence takes about 60 days. The colony does not produce reproductives, winged males and females, until it is from 6 to 10 years old and contains about 2,000 workers, end quote. This page gives some further information on carpenter ants. Quote, it is common to find carpenter ants in homes during spring. An important method for preventing carpenter ant problems indoors is to eliminate high moisture conditions that are attractive to them. Also, replace any moisture-damaged wood. Be careful to prevent moisture in wood or lumber that is stored in a garage or near the house, and if possible, elevate this wood to allow air circulation. Store firewood as far away from buildings as possible. Remove tree and shrub stumps and roots. Trim branches that overhang the home so these branches don't contact the house, including roof and eaves. Also, prune branches that touch electrical lines or other wires that are connected to the house. Carpenter ants can travel from branches to lines and use them like a highway to buildings. End quote. Here's a quick note on licenses. In this video, I quoted extensively from the Wikipedia article on carpenter ants. The Wikipedia text is available under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License. YouTube only lets me share this video under the Creative Commons Attribution License, 
but I intend for this video to be shared under the same license as the Wikipedia article in order to meet the share alike requirement. 